For many reasons, planting citrus in containers is a great choice. Citrus aren't truly cold hardy. When we grow them in containers, we retain the option of being able to bring them inside and protect them from freezing temperatures. You can also find dwarf varieties, and those are ideal for cultivating in this method because they're going to stay compact as they mature. That makes growing your own citrus an option for a small space, such as a patio or even a sunroom. This is a long-term investment, and doing everything that we can to support its establishment and healthy growth is going to be key to our success. Success. What's up everyone? It's Scott from New Garden Road. You know I'm here to inform, inspire, and elevate you. Encouraging biodiversity and restoring habitat is my mission. One garden at a time. Today I'm going to be potting up a Sato Mandarin. This is a pretty cold hardy tree, but I do still like to cultivate them in containers. That way I can bring them inside and protect them easily. Also, I just don't have a place in the yard that I know I want to plant it. So, this kind of helps me out. When you choose a container to plant your tree in, you want it to be about 10 to 15% larger than the root ball of the tree that you're planting. All of the citrus that I purchased have come in these three gallon pots here. So you can see that is about 12 inches across, maybe 10 or 12 inches deep. My go-to container for potting up citrus trees has been a 16 inch terracotta pot. Now that's a pretty good sized pot and you might be thinking it looks a little bit larger than 10 to 15 percent of the root ball i'm going to get into that a little bit later i've got a nice trick that i like to employ i really like these because they have a good porosity to their structure which helps them dry out more efficiently if you choose a glazed or ceramic pot just keep that in mind you're gonna to have to monitor your watering really closely because there's one thing that citrus don't want and that's wet feet they can rot out more easily so that's why i like to choose terracotta because i feel like they breathe better Another main ingredient that you're going to need besides a citrus tree and a pot is going to be potting soil, which is actually potting mix. There's not actually any soil in this bag, but this is the Happy Frog from Fox Farm. It's what I would consider to be a premium potting soil. Whatever you choose, I encourage you to select the highest quality product possible because this is the soil that you're going to be growing your tree in for many, many years. So why not choose something that's made of quality ingredients and is really going to support your tree in getting established? Okay. So I'm going to put some potting soil on the bottom of this pot first. Probably a couple gallons in there. Kind of even it out. Make a little bit of a well. Now I'm going to test out the soil level after I've done that. I don't want to overplant or underplant this tree. And ideally the soil level in the end shouldn't be any higher than what's already in this container. See that right there? What you should find on the tree is something like a root flare. There's a point at which the tree will start to go out and you may find that like a shoulder, but regardless, don't plant your tree any deeper than it already is in the container that it came in. All right, I think that looks good for my purposes, but I'm gonna tell you, as I plant this tree, I'm probably gonna work with it a little bit. I wanna turn it here. I might plant it kind of cockeyed on account that it's grown a little bit sideways. You need to work with your trees as they grow. That means you gotta cultivate it in the fashion that you prefer. Okay, so I removed the mulch that was here in this tree. It's still got some loose debris, but I'm not going to worry about it. I want to gently massage this pot. Really just trying to coax it free. So if your tree doesn't feel like it's going to come out of the container after you give it that massage, you can use something like a hori hori knife or a trowel and just kind of carefully go around the perimeter. That should do it. So first I'm going to try to hold the pot in place and lift up on the root stock here. Okay, looking good. Look at all those roots. That's really well developed root system. That's what you want. If you get a citrus tree at a nursery and it's just been propagated recently, chances are it's not gonna have a root system developed like this. That can be a problem come time to transplant it because what will happen is the soil and the medium is really just gonna fall apart because there's no roots in it to hold it together. You know, I'll show you here in a little bit, but these are grafted trees. That's something that's young. You need it to heal, you need it to set. That's why part of my advice is to let your tree root out in the nursery pot before you put it in a container. You can keep the container in a pot like this. That'll give it some stability. Just don't plant it yet. If you need to check it, you're just gonna do like I did there and pull it out. And if it seems like it's real loose, you just need to be careful, then don't do it. Otherwise, you start seeing some solid roots. You know you got something to work with and you can go ahead and plant it. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this pot out of here. I'm gonna double check my planting depth. 
I've got this tree sitting kind of low in this pot. There's a good five or six inches from the soil level to the top of the pot. That's important. You don't want it sitting all the way at the top because you need to leave some room for mulch. And also as you water it, it's gonna be channeled more efficiently to the root zone. In addition to that, I don't wanna to add too much potting soil. I really don't wanna over plant this. That's why I think the 16 inch gives you some flexibility it's a little bit larger than you might think you need, but ultimately, I think it's just right. I'm gonna gently score the roots with my hands. I wanna loosen them up. That's gonna encourage them to root out into the soil, find some fresh nutrients. See that, just gentle-like. Might look at the bottom a little bit more closely. Kind of like that. Nothing too hardcore. Just trying to influence it a little bit. There's a good set there, see? Some of the roots are sticking out now. That's perfect. Check out the bottom. Looks like a lot of healthy roots. Some roly-polies in there too. Uh, I'm not worried about that. Roly-polies don't tend to bother the living citrus trees. I'm gonna kind of lightly twist and push it down, apply some pressure. Just gonna go ahead and start adding some more of this. Start to kind of push it down in there. You're helping to break up any air pockets and get the soil in place. Man, this potting soil smells good. This particular potting soil is full of earthworm castings and bat guano, some composted forest products. I really think it's a, a nice product. Show some love to your citrus trees. Give them some happy frog. That root ball feels solid and supported. Now that I've got that in there, I'm just gonna kind of smooth it out a little bit. But I think it needs a little bit more soil. Saw some roots there, I wanna cover those up. I don't really see a clear root flare. You don't wanna add soil up too high. This bark is not waterproof. Over time, and it can take a long time, you can get some bacteria and some fungal growth, and that can be a detriment to your tree long-term. Okay, I think that looks great. A star is born, a Sato Mandarin. Woohoo! I also recommend mulching these trees after you've got them planted. And my favorite mulch is honestly pine straw. You may have some of this growing in your yard, it's just fine to use. One of the reasons that I really like pine straw is because you can water through it really easily. If you choose a hardwood mulch or a shredded cedar, over time those are gonna get caked together and water is really just gonna run off to the side down the edge of the container. When you use pine straw, it goes right through and should saturate evenly. Mulching protects soil microbes. It also helps to keep the moisture content of the soil more consistent. It's not gonna dry out too fast. It'll help you keep weeds at bay, and that's gonna be less work. Somewhere in the neighborhood of two or three inches. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm also gonna pull it back from the uh, base of this tree. So that way, it's got some air circulation. Again, just to make sure you don't get any rot on this bark over the long term. Now that I'm done applying the mulch, I'm gonna make sure and give it a good watering, giving it a bit more. I like to do an initial pass on the light side, let things start to get saturated, and then I'll come back and do a second pass. After you plant your citrus tree in a container, I recommend giving it a nice drench of liquid seaweed. This is the Maxi Crop Soluble Seaweed Powder. I really think it's an economical and sustainable option. What you need to do is take one teaspoon and mix it with one gallon of water. One trick that I have for mixing it up is I like to use a mason jar that's filled up halfway with water. I'll go ahead and put in the seaweed powder that I'm gonna use, and then when I put that lid on there, I shake it up real, real good. It blends up just fine. I'll add it to a watering can after that and top off the water level. Let's talk about the anatomy of a citrus tree a little bit. When I mentioned earlier that they're grafted, that's, that's right here, see? You can see a little bit of a line and the lower portion is gonna be the rootstock. The fact of the matter is citrus trees won't produce true to type when grown from seed. So you're gonna find them grafted. So I wanna give you a couple of helpful tips when you're shopping for a citrus tree in the first place. 
I like to see a very straight graph point. Part of that is aesthetics, but part of it is gonna be, you know, the flow, the overall way that this tree establishes itself. The, the graft here needs to establish and needs to heal. When I see one that's straight, I feel like it's gonna have better compatibility and a better chance at being, you know, successful in the long term, as well as having more integrity. I'm also gonna be really careful, and if I find some that are, you know, setting out stems from below the graft, that's not, the citrus tree that you want to grow. It's not going to be, in this case, the Sato Mandarin. It's going to be the rootstock. The leaves are going to look different. It's often going to be thorny. That's not what you want to see in your nursery selection. However, if you do, the thing to remember is you just need to prune it off and keep pruning those until you don't see them anymore. This is a, an example of what I was telling you to look out for. You can see the graft point here for this tree. And just below that graft point, we've got this shoot. This is the foliage that comes from the rootstock. And this is the foliage from the mandarin. So I need to prune this off. So I'm really keen on a straight graft point and no shoots below the graft. If you'll notice too, this the stake is in here. Now that, that was placed initially to aid the rootstock and the scion here to merge together. This is a tree that I've had for three years. And at this point, the graft should be really solid. It's all set. I think that what I've learned over time is this is a good time to remove this metal stake. It's easy to forget or you might leave it in there because you're not sure and you want to give it the best support possible. But what I found is that over time, I can't get them out. There's a chance that might present some type of problem in the future, maybe not. But regardless, this is a great time to take it out. Ta -da! I'm gonna take a little bit of time to prune up this tree. I wanna remove any yellow leaves as well as any limbs that are starting to point downwards. Smells like mandarin. This citrus tree is gonna to need to be potted up in about three to four years. Now at that time, it's probably gonna become root bound so that the root ball will be mainly roots. There won't be as much soil in there. And when you go to try to water it, you're gonna notice that the water is gonna pass through more quickly. That's because it's gonna hit the top of that soil and it's gonna to roll to the side, take the path of least resistance and go out the bottom of the drainage hole. At that point, you're gonna to wanna to consider potting up your citrus. And what I like to do is get two pots out of one. Gently and slowly, try to pull straight up. Okay, looks good. All right, there, see? Just like when I pulled the Sato Mandarin out of its nursery pot, you can see a lot of roots here. Looks really healthy. I'm gonna take that soil and let it fall in there. Not completely rooted out, but got lots of nice healthy roots. All right, now for the moment of truth. All right, cool. So I want to straighten that up like that. Okay. By moving a little soil, making an angle on the bottom, I've got my tree trunk in a more vertical position and I've still got plenty of room to add soil. Same technique from here on out. Just get that soil down there, stabilize the root ball, looking good. I think that's about got it. Got some exposed root flare. So it's not planted too deep. I've been able to get two uses out of one pot. And I straightened the tree. And I should get at least a couple more years of growth for my mandarin tree. Now check out more awesome gardening videos on my channel. Like this one if you like it. And follow New Garden Road for weekly content. You can grow your own food. Keep it organic.